Cool, what is good? Welcome to week six, day one of Cine 230 Remix Cultures. We are past the halfway mark and we are doing our thing in this online remote edition of this course. I hope y'all are well, getting out, getting some exercise, feeling good. I'm just down here at the barn, you know, just outside, just trying to switch up the location. Got some, uh, a new colony of honeybees my homeboy dropped off. They're buzzing right in the background um, today. So I'm pretty excited about all that. Um, anyway, so we're going to do our thing today. We're going to talk about graffiti art, street art, and uh, appropriation art in general, um, which is one of my, my favorite days to talk about. Um, you know, back in the back in the day when I was a teenager, before I had status and before I had a pager, um, that's a tribe called Quest lyric. Look them up, look it up if you don't know what it is. But anyways, uh, back in the day, I used to I used to write, used to bomb. I was horrible, but I used to love uh, you know spray paint and aerosol art. I still have a great great appreciation. Um, spend a lot of time, you know, just chilling uh, down at the yards around the yards in Eugene watching trains pass by um, just because I, I love I love that you know that that form of communication uh, Eugene's actually a really dope place um, I know a lot of y'all students don't get off of campus much don't get past Kincaid you know if you go past Kincaid you will you will not evaporate you will not die you know um, I always urge students to kind of get out of the campus area at least a few times while you're friggin here um, but the city of Eugene's invested a lot of um, our money, taxpayer money, uh, into having public art. One of their goals has been to have a lot of really cool public, public art, um, you know, kind of like an art tourism sort of, sort of vibe. And so they've had really cool street artists, really great muralists, um, not only people local, Eugene, Oregon, but a lot of, um, you know, internationally known artists. So one, one stencil artist you'll notice around town is Black Rat, who's, you know, kind of like a Banksy style vibe, but not as political all the time. So uh, but just lots of cool street art murals around around here. So, you know, if you ever can, can, can get out and enjoy that stuff, it's, it's always it's always a, a pleasure. I'd rather look at that than fucking advertisements and all day long. You know, give me street art. But, um, yeah, so I know a lot of y'all probably, probably, you know, the street artist you're probably most familiar with is Banksy. So I like to sort of start and stick around in that, <clears throat> in that area. Um, you know, we, we know, we know his art, we know it's worth money. We know he's a prankster. We don't maybe know who he is, but we do know he's a millionaire. We know he could be a multi, multi, multi millionaire, um, you know, if he was profiting from all of the um you know t-shirts and coffee mugs and shit on etsy that has his art on him you know he, he doesn't see a dime of that and we'll talk a little bit about why he doesn't but the the general reason why is you know here's the deal is first off street art graffiti whether it's authorized or unauthorized is an expression of an idea fixed in a tangible medium that's both original and hella creative um and the issue is, though, with unauthorized street art is that, you know, in order for you to sue the people on Etsy or to do anything, you have to reveal your, your, your true name and you have to reveal yourself as a criminal, as a trespasser, as a van vandalizer, etc. So most street artists um, or graffiti artists, you know, won't come out and sue specifically for artwork that is unauthorized, uh, although they do own the copyright on it that's very important to, to note is that all street art, all graffiti art from your low fodder, you know, uh, throw ups to your extensive end to end train burners to your, you know, interpretive art murals. Those are all copyrighted works um, that exist in the public. So, um, you know, that artist enjoys their RP 3Ds, reproduction, distribution, derivatives, display and performance. I don't know how you perform uh, street art, but, you know. Um, so anyways, you know, you know, even Banksy thinks that copyright is for losers, which, I, you know, I think, you know, I want to really um, say to y'all, like, 
you know, I value copyright. I think it's important for artists to get paid. I think it's important for so many reasons, but I think you should enjoy some form of monopoly on your, on your work. Um, I just think the laws are a little fucked up and out of control, and they don't protect you and I. You know, they protect uh, companies. And I also don't even mind corporations. Like, I'm not one of those super leftist academics that thinks all corporations are, are bad. Um, just the Los Angeles Lakers for taking $4.6 million and applying for $4.6 million of the COVID-19 small business money. They did give it back, but what a bunch of suckers, Lakers fans out there. I see you. I see you. Um, anyways, that, that, that's tangential. But, uh, you know, I do think copyright is, is important. I just think it needs to be reformed to be more realistic for the world we live in, um, you know, be fairer to, to artists and to enhance our public domain. You know, our public domain is, is vital and, um, and, and we need it. So, um, but yeah, you know, whatever. Banksy doesn't like copyright. And, and we'll get into a little bit about it. Uh, I don't know if y'all checked out Dismaland um, or heard about Dismaland, which was this exhibit that Banksy put on. Uh, he likes to do like things like this where he does like pop-up stores or pop-up exhibits that pose as an amusement park or, you know, um, what he called a amusement park. This was a satire on themeless theme parks. Essentially, you know, you go to Disneyland, it doesn't have a theme. I mean, I've never been there, <laughs> but it doesn't really have a theme, right? It's just a bunch of like Disney franchises and intellectual properties, movie rights that it has, you know, Marvel stuff, um, you know, Star Wars stuff that's all Disney stuff, but there's no theme, you know, it's just a exploitation of their, their catalog. But uh, Banksy did this five week exhibit in Somerset, um, you know, part of England, uh, you know, we set up this, you know, this exclusive um, amusement park, this, this satire, um, this critique on amusement parks. Damn, son, how's your emissions? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Limited tickets, 4000 that he sold for 6 bucks each. So, I mean, you know, he, the cool thing about Banksy is he does a lot of stuff that's, like, for the people. You know, he doesn't make his art for, like, the, the wealthy people. Although I think, like, Brad Pitt and stuff, you know, went, 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 to, went to the um, Dismaland. Um, you know, and he did, like, he did this art piece, I think, last summer or two summers ago, where the artwork, like, auctioned off. And then at the auction, like, he had, like, a self-timed shredder on it that shredded the art piece and then like kind of as like a prank on art you know um and art critics and art sellers and art dealers and then people were like oh well it's probably worth more now that it's you know shredded and whatever but he's done things where like he'll he'll hire like there was one thing i saw where he like hired like you know an old man at like a street market who was selling original Banksy pieces, but it was just an old man and not marketed as Banksy stuff. So all these people bought these, who bought pieces from this old man, you know, found out eventually that they had original Banksy art, you know. Um, but anyways, this is, this satire is pretty interesting. You can see some images, you know, um, you know, and he basically hired people to work there and to look really unamused, you know, um, and it, it's definitely a critique on Disney. It's definitely a critique on theme parks. Um, and, and, you know, how a lot of Disney employees feel at like the theme parks, um, you know, the exploitation of labor and, and stuff and stuff like that. Um, you know, but it's pretty interesting, but I, I just want to ask, you know, do you think it's a, a fair use? And if we were to Panam it, you know, uh, you know, it's pretty clear it's going to be, you know, a fair use, although it's generally a satire. If you look at some of the, some of the images, you know, you know that it's very, it's transformative, it's critiquing. You know, it's directly a parody of, of Disney properties. You know, it's definitely a parody of, 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 of theme parks. And it's definitely a satire, a social satire on consumerism, and, which is often something he attacks, um, which is always interesting for someone who has a lot of money. Um, you, know, um, you know, if you look at theme parks, of course, they're, they're original. But this is obviously building upon that, right? And, and um, amount used, I mean, who really... Who really knows? It's he's using the Nuff, so you know it's Ariel, so you know that it's like you know Magic Kingdom and stuff like that. And then market harm. This is clearly not 
no one's going to Somerset, England, thinking it's Disneyland. It, it's not an adequate substitution. It doesn't hurt Disney um, in, in any way. So it's clearly a fair use. It's also pretty rad, you know, just to like, you know, have a bunch of different artists come and do this, do this piece. You know, it's pretty, pretty radical. I appreciate that. And also making it affordable. Um, 